Hi, it's Russ, Scally Dandling About the Books. And Steve, not Scally Dandling About the Books. <laughs> I've been, been released again. <laughs> yes, every now and then Steve deigns to um, come and participate in a video. And uh, he, this time it's a sort of Victober related video. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Indeed, because he and I have both um, read in the last few days um, this book, The Fraud, by Sadie Smith. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is that Victor related? You, you, you ask yourself. Isn't this a brand new, just newly released novel? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. it is. Um, it came out in oh, early September. Yeah, a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah so, not even that. No, yeah. about six weeks yeah. ago, I think, if, le yeah. if not less. And um, it's a new novel by Sadie Smith, and it's her. So her first historical novel, I think. Yes, her sixth novel, but her first historical novel. Like, uh, and, she... and guess which period it's set in. It's, yes, it's the Victorian era. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Victorian historical fiction. Not only is it set in the Victorian era, but it is specifically set, sort of based or a retelling of the life of... Um, the uh, sadly now forgotten uh, Victorian novelist William Ainsworth, who's a, a real character uh, who um, uh, was writing throughout the Victorian era. Yeah, I think his, his first novel was published in 1824, so before <coughs> Victoria came to the throne, and his last in... Oh, so the 1870s? 18, 18, 18, 1881. 1881. So 1824 to 1880, yeah. 1881 was his, his writing career. He was, he was born in 1805 and died in 1882, so, mm. yeah... Very firmly in the Victorian era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he, he published, or had published, uh, 41 novels in total, um, all of which were out of print uh, within 100 years of, uh, of, his, uh, of them being written. I mm -hmm. think. Um, I, having read about reviews of the Zadie Smith book uh, uh, and heard Ros talking about Victoria Challenges, one of which is to read uh, an author that you hadn't previously read, I thought that Mr Ainsworth would... Uh, would uh, would fit this bill uh, nicely, um, particularly as one of the one of the forty one books he wrote was set in uh, in Sussex. Uh, in fact, I think several of his books were set in Sussex, but this one was called Ovingdean Grange, which is not more than or about two or three miles from where we're sitting at the moment. Um, so I thought this would be a, a local interest and uh, uh, and a chance to read a, a hitherto unknown Victorian novelist. Yes. In in Victober. So how did how did that work out for you, Steve? <laughs> there is a reason why William Ainsworth is not spoken of in hushed tones um, whenever Victorian literature is discussed, despite the fact that one of his books, uh, as Zadie Smith tells us, uh, uh, often uh, outsold um, Oliver Twist. Yes, uh, his book Jack Shepherd and Oliver mm, Twist mm, were out. At the same time, you know, yeah. published around the same time, and 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 his book Jack Shepherd was the bigger seller yeah, at the time, not by, since. <laughs> by four to one, I think. Yeah, four to one, he was yeah, yeah, selling. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he did no Dickens uh, and Thackeray but, and lots of people like that. I mean, he and Dickens were actually, you know, friends, quite close friends for for three about three years, and yeah. then. Yeah. Kind of gradually party company, particularly. So whether it's true or not, I think it's A.D. Smith sort of hints at the fact that uh, that Dickens, uh, being ambitious and indeed a uh, far, far better writer mm. uh, than Ainsworth, but used Ainsworth's then uh, popularity and fame as a as a uh, a way to boost his own career. He was yeah. not averse to going around to uh, Ainsworth and drinking his port uh, uh, with, with with other literary people. And and using it to, to get into the literary sort of so, circle that Ainsworth yeah. was was more establishing because he was a, he was a bit yeah, older. He was doing it a bit longer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Thackeray yeah. Were, was a regular participant. Mm. Crookshank, who illustrated both Ainsworth's books and Dickens's books. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a number of others. Yeah, but um, I think you could probably best describe Ainsworth's books as um, pot boilers uh, <laughs> or travelogues, even some of them. Um, in that, uh, the, yeah, not particularly well written. There's a lot. Most of them are historical. They're, they're setting a, in a historical setting. I think was it Jack Shepherd. Uh, it, it sort of retells the story of Dick Turpin. Uh, Rook, Rookwood retells. Rookwood, Rookwood was, was Dick Turpin, which was, which was his first and, successful novel. Yeah. And then Jack Shepherd, which was 
a couple yeah. of novels later was another high woman figure yeah. And, yeah. and yeah but uh, he's he's um, apparently he is uh, responsible for the the legendary story of Dick Turpin riding from London to York in a night mm. um uh, uh, so, so that that yeah may or may not be true that that's down to Ainsworth. Yeah. Um, sadly, he didn't really um, reach those heights again. Uh, if if he ever did reach any heights, um, yes, his style of writing is relatively cliched. He he um, he, he, he never uses the word said, as in he said, rather when you can say he ejaculated. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot of it, people ejaculating, and one person at one stage even mentally ejaculates, which um, <laughs> <laughs> slightly boggling that one. Slightly yes. boggling, yeah. yeah. So yes, he, he, he yes he, he tends to well, yeah he's not a very good writer really, yeah. but you can see why they he, he would have been popular. He ran his own magazine for a while, yeah. uh, several uh, Victorian literary magazines. I think he edited, so he had a a, a ready. Um, supply of publishing for his own works as well. Um, it was interesting to read uh, his accounts of Sussex. Um, mm -hmm. And I was saying to Royce, I, I did sort of wonder if he, he, he might have played a kind of Victorian influencer card uh, at some stages because he, he frequently mentions public houses or hostelries and how good they are. Uh, <laughs> Uh, some of which are still still exist today. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, yeah, so I, I wonder if he was at the Star Inn in Alfriston and just sort of said to the landlord, you know, I'm a, I'm a well-known author. Oh, I'm on, uh, just researching a book at the moment. Yeah. Book, yeah, it's going to be set in the, uh, in the English Civil Wars. And, um, uh, you, know, you know, would you like to be in it? In, in which case, uh, uh, how about a free meal or an overnight stay? I, I, yeah, I've got no evidence for that, but it does <laughs> seem like that, in that he's constantly um, bigging up hostelries and things like that. Yeah. So this, yes, this particular Ovingdean Grange is set in the English Civil War. Um, it's got all of your stock characters. It's got you know stout yeoman, loyal uh, uh, people. It's uh, it's very much on the cavalier side of the English Civil War. Um, and it's, so the dashing, glamorous, dash, yeah. honourable cavaliers and those dastardly dust rounded, 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 yes, yeah. yes, that just, that just yeah. want to upset upset the status quo. How dare they? Yes. Indeed, yes. And it's it's the sort it's it's, it's effectively it's the story of um, Charles II or Charles mm. Stuart as I suppose he was then mm. uh, having lost the Battle of Worcester, um, legging it and getting out of the country, which um, he did via a boat from Shoreham in uh, Sussex. In Sussex yeah. again, you know, yeah. seven or eight miles from where from where we are now. It's yeah. the sort of thing that if you grew up in in this sort of neck of the woods, uh, yeah, local history people would uh, would bore you with uh, would. Uh, uh, mentioned fairly frequently. Yes, yeah. uh, and I think um, great potential for an enjoyable book, but yeah. just yeah. yeah. So, so he he had sort of ideas, mm. and and um, but yeah. executed them fairly um, in a turgid yes. fashion. Yeah. There we go. Why we ask ourselves did um, Zadie Smith pick him? as a sort of a central figure in her new novel, um, The Fraud. Because no one knows about him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I wonder that she, I mean, she actually, she bases this on, she, there's three threads, three characters that are sort of yeah. built around, I suppose. Um, one of which is Ainsworth's household. And the our, our main protagonist is his cousin, who was um, uh, a widow and became, sort of came to live with him and helped look after his children and was, at least according to Smith, his um, uh, his, his partner, you know, as in uh, lover. lover. Um, and she also... Housekeeper. Uh, and, yes, yeah, sort of ran, th but also edited mm. or sort of, you know, wrote out his books for him mm. and supported supported yeah. his his writing and his ability to, to write and was sort of hostess and of, of those literary dinner parties. Yeah. and She'd be the one going to get the port yeah. for Dickens and Thackeray to drink. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so the sort of the Ainsworth household is, is, is the sort of uh, main structure of the book. Mm. But then there's, there's two other key stories in it. One is um, uh, one of those, 
times when history is is stranger than fiction, which mm. is the Tichborne claimant. Um, which is a, a real case where um, the the heir to a, a fortune, I guess, made from sugarcane, um, <clears throat> disappeared on the on 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 route to South Africa and yeah, and, and, and was reported drowned. Um, but then later, when uh, 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 someone appeared claiming to be him, um, and there were various trials as to to to, set, to assess whether he was yeah, in was... fact the the, the um, Tichborne heir. Um, um, as he claimed, <clears throat> as he claimed or, 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 or a butcher from Wapping <laughs> <clears throat> um, <throat> and um, it, 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 unlikely as it sounds he, he he became a real sort of popular hero mm. cause celebre you know um, people even though it seems fairly <coughs> obvious that he was a fraud mm. um, you know people really took up his cause mm. I mean it, it, perversely simultaneously sort of seeing him as yes the rightful heir to the baronetcy but also the sort of the ordinary man not being given the chance to have a fair trial you know there's a sort of yeah. illogicality yeah it's, it's one of us one of the working one people of, yes. that's uh, being done down by the man yeah um it's i think it's one of those interesting things and uh, yeah and quite clearly uh, smith is, is drawing parallels with um mm -hmm. with, with more modern times when you know people people are quite happy to ignore facts um, in order to believe the story, uh, yeah. and you can think of numerous examples currently where where that yeah. goes on, where people yeah you know, people are much more you know, happy to believe um, something because it makes them feel better rather or, than is actually or, the case. Or, yeah. or the 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 enjoyable yeah. sense of there being some sort of conspiracy. Or, yeah, you know, yes, yeah. So outrage. You know, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we we live in a world of outrage. Yes, yes, uh, and I think I think hmm. so. I think that's one of the things that um, uh, Smith was was oh, yeah. sort of wanted to draw out. And then the third sort of story that we get in 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 the book is the story of um, uh, Chapel Bogle, who was a um, grew up as a, as a slave, became um, the sort of valet of um, a. a the, what, what would have been the Tichborne claimant's um, great uncle or no. whatever, you know, it's a, a relative. Sort of, a relative. Yeah. Um, so knew, knew the real Roger Tichborne as a child and it came forward as um, a, a sort of a witness supporting, mm. you know, saying that this he was the real, the real Roger Tichborne. And was very one of the most convincing um, elements in his case because he steadfastly sort of spoke spoke up for him and in the middle of the book we get um his story mm. so his childhood and his life is in jamaica and then his life in england and mm. and so on and it's um uh and and australia it, it, and those are the three strands that smith mm. is weaving together through the figure of the the the, the cousin um mm. eliza who was a real person, but in the in real life, sort of died in I think eighteen sixty nine. But in this book, she she outlives her mm. her, her brother, so that she can oh. be around. Sorry, her cousin for the Tichborne trials, yeah. and and gets caught up in that, and is fascinated yeah. by that, and meets um, uh, Arthur. Arthur Bogle yeah, is it Arthur? Arthur well, yeah. well, Henry. So Henry was a son. Oh, Arthur Bogle was a son. Yeah, yeah. Um, meets and interviews him, and and the sort of conceit, sort of, is that ultimately she writes a novel, and that that maybe this is sort of the novel that mm. she wrote, but that's never entirely <clears throat> clear. Yeah. How did it? How did so? How did this work in contrast with um, old William Harrison Ainsworth's of Dean Grange? How did this work for you as a novel? She's a much better writer. <laughs> Uh, she, could, she can write a decent sentence. Yes, yes. Um, there's very little ejaculation, I think. Uh, <laughs> Other than when she's quoting. Um, yeah. Yes, no, she points, she points out. Well, yes, yeah. 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 yeah, I read them in parallel. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, although I finished Zadie Smith sooner mm -hmm. than um, Ainsworth because it was a bit hard going in places. <laughs> but, uh, I, yeah, she's a better writer. I mean, I think structurally there are some, some issues for me with, 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 with it. Uh, as we we've talked about, but I enjoyed it. I thought yeah. I thought it was a fun read. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I found I really enjoyed the first half of the, 
half of the book. I really liked Eliza because mm. she's quite, she's a sort of quite a, mm. she's a strong but quite slightly sort of difficult mm. character in, in, and, and expresses lots of the sort of frustrations of Victorian mm. womanhood. Uh, you know, so that that was so. So I enjoyed I enjoyed that, and I was I didn't mind the hopping back and forth in time. That I know some review sort of on good reason where they grumble about that, but that worked. The and I quite I enjoyed the Tichborne mm. story and the dramatization of that and the court scenes. It mm. always makes good reading a court mm. scene, doesn't it? The the bit that what kind of didn't there was a couple of things that just didn't work for me. I, the, the Bogle story is a brilliant story, and I can see why Zadie wanted to put it in, Zadie Smith, but it, it sort of plonked in the middle of the book mm. as if he'd happily told it to Eliza that you know, she takes him out for lunch um, sort of after the trial, and, mm. and he just tells her his entire life story. That didn't make mm. sense. It felt quite artificial, sort of yeah. sh- the way that was sort of shoehorned in and then the end of the book sort of petered out rather mm. for me I didn't enjoy the last part as much whereas I had really enjoyed the first half but you know that, that doesn't mean it's a bad book but it, it, it slightly didn't live up to its initial promise mm. I suppose well, I, think that, I think that's fair I mean I, I enjoyed it I, yeah. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think reading Ainsworth at the same time made me appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> to <allow it>. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, yeah, as I say, the structural things about how do you, I mean, it's absolutely quite right because it's too too um, infrequently done, particularly in Victorian literature, to, mm-hmm. to, to sort of cover the issues around uh, that are raised by the Tichborne um, case because um, the money that they made did come from sugarcane plantations. There's also, you know, as part of Bogle's story, she talks about, you know, the... Uh, our, our smug English view that we we did away with slavery. Um, so, uh, so that's all right then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it, was part of it. it was a staged thing. That yeah, first of all, it was the the the, the trade that we mm. um, we abolished, and then the actual ownership of slaves was about mm. twenty or thirty years after that, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So so that was still persisting. So Bogle represent and Bogle's story represent that yeah. a way of putting that into a Victorian setting. Yes, yes. Um, uh, but and it did seem a bit forced. Forced, but, but yeah, as you say, good story. But good, maybe, good story. Who for you? Who who who's who's the fraud? Who is the, the fraud? Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, the Tichborne claimant is the obvious fraud. Yeah, yeah. So he was definitely you yeah. know. He was a butcher from Wapping. He was a butcher from Wapping, which is pretty, almost, almost certain, right. almost certain. Um, was was Ainsworth a, a fraud? Did he pretend to be something that he wasn't? Um, he pretended to be a great writer. Or he pretended to be a good writer, but he wasn't. But that was that wasn't a deliberate attempt to deceive. He, 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 he believed he was yeah. really talented. He yeah. believed in himself from mm. from child, yes, from childhood onwards, didn't mm. he? So. Yeah. Um, I mean, uh, uh, there's an, a sort of a, a view almost <laughs> that every novelist is a, is a fraud. You yeah. know, it, it's sort of in the nature of invention. They're, they're, they're and so they're all on. making it up. <laughs> yeah, how dare they? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, but no, it feels unfair to mm. to to. to yeah. yeah. So the the other two possible frauds we're left with are Eliza and 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 Bogle. Yeah. And I think, I think if Eliza is a fraud, the person she's deceiving most is herself. Yeah, because she wants to yeah. think of herself as kind of quite progressive, you know, she, as an abolitionist <coughs> yeah. and, and, yeah. and, and, and so on. Yeah, I think so. And, um, uh, it's, yes, it, what, is, what is Bogle's game? What is he doing? What is he? And so yeah. that is the central Because he must thing. know, he must know that... He knew Ro- 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 the real Ro- Roger Ro- Tichborn. Ro- um, when yeah. he was a boy, and he yeah. he presents everyone says, oh, he seems so honest and convincing. Yeah. You know, he's the, the the witness that you know seems yeah. stalwart, and yeah. and yet he must have sh- yeah. you know have yeah. known. So why did he? <clears throat> and he didn't have great. Um, he 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 might have had a chance of financial gain, but probably not. Mm. So. Feel, it felt to me like the, the 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 possibility was that he was doing it as a kind of a a, a revenge, yeah. a, a, an anarchic yeah. 
a disruption, act, a disruption yeah. of the the family that he'd worked for, yeah. and the the man that he worked for um, was the. Um, the, the 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 manager and steward for for the own Chandos, mm. the Duke of Chandos, who was the owner of the estate where you know he was enslaved. Yeah. So uh, you know that. So that's I suppose the interesting kind yeah. kind of twist. So yeah, mm. but but that's never but that's never clear. Yeah. We're never sure. And so that's yeah, that's yeah. The, perhaps the most interesting. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. It yeah. raises questions, which a good book should. A good book should. Yeah. should. Yeah. yeah, but it but it, it wasn't. A, it wasn't a. It, it wasn't quite as brilliant a book as some of the reviews perhaps yeah. have suggested. I, I think I think Sadie Smith is very well connected, mm-hmm. and people, you know. Uh, but yeah, however, worth a worth a look. Um, possibly unlike um, of Indian Grange. By... I, wouldn't, I wouldn't rush to read any William Ainsworth. I mean, yeah, yeah, I would probably have a look at the, the two books which are cited as being better than his normal ones. Yeah. So they usually travel. One of the things I liked in the Zadie Smith was that um, uh, George Eliot makes a fleeting, a fleeting uh, appearance as because uh, she apparently attended the the Tichborne trial. Yeah. yeah in the as court. many people did, as it was a people, big yeah, public big, spectacle. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, there's a there's a scene where at one of the dinner parties, the male Victorian novelists are discussing some of the female writers that are around, mm-hmm. and Ainsworth sort of uh, is very sniffy about the fact that their mm-hmm. books are about people. Yes. Yes. He's he's, 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 he's written. Books are going to be about the future people. People. <laughs> <laughs> and he'd just been reading Middlemarch. Yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. Yeah. But um, and 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 I suppose the the what made reading the fraud really worthwhile for me this month was that conjuring up of that the literary Victorian literary London, literary yeah. London, and yeah. and 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 all the the interconnections yeah. and um, what they were all reading, yeah. and that gave it an extra sort of frisson of enjoyment for me. Yeah, there we go. Bye.